Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online valuation services for mediation and litigation based in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we will discuss personal tax returns and tips for divorce attorneys with Jason Soman. He's a valuation expert in Orlando, Florida. He specializes in advising lawyers, business owners, and high net worth individuals on issues related to business valuation and forensic accounting in the context of family law disputes, shareholder disputes, estate and gift tax matters, commercial litigation, and all sorts of things. A lot of the details in there is going to be more important. And it also helps, like you said, the roadmap right? So somebody comes in and says, well, I don't even know what we have. You can look at the tax return and kind of determine, well, are there houses? Are there boats? Are there, you know, um, retirement accounts? But why is this important for attorneys to identify some of these financial issues early on in the divorce case? So people always say that discovery wins cases. Um, so, you know, the cases, a lot of attorneys say the cases aren't won in the courtroom, they're one, one in discovery. Um, so as a forensic accountant, you need to understand that and help the attorney get a, a view of what is the total magnitude of the financial issues here and what are we going to focus our most attention on, um, especially with high net worth individuals, um, you need to be able to focus on what matters most. Um, you know, clients don't have unlimited resources. Attorneys don't have unlimited time. We need to be able to, us forensic accountants and also family law attorneys need to be able to focus on what matters most. Um, I also am under the impression that, you know, if you request from, from someone on the other side, you know, give me all your bank accounts and brokerage accounts, there's a high probability that you may not get everything. But I, I'm under the impression if you ask for Bank of, Bank of America 5678 TD bank account 2056, um, that, that's more powerful because you know what the accounts are. Also, if you're able to identify certain bank accounts or business interests, you could also subpoena those documents directly from the bank. Um, so to me, that's, that's more powerful. Um, it, it gives you a lot of clues. And, and like I said, it's a roadmap. It's not a, a GPS. It's not going to take you there, but it's going to kind of point out what are the different potential issues going on here. No. And I think that that's a really good point um, because a lot of times in discovery, we're saying, give us all of this information, right? Give us all mm -hmm. of your bank accounts, like you just said. And everybody's like, okay, well, I think I gave you all my bank accounts. Like I pulled up what I remembered, right? Mm -hmm. And then it leads to, <clears throat> or they'll say it's overly, you know, it, it's burdensome and it's too much information. You need to narrow your focus kind of situation. And those are all things that the attorneys deal with. But a lot of what how we can help is to identify the specific accounts. I think some of the forensic accounting can also help identify accounts whenever you're looking through bank statements, right? Absolutely. You might see, you know, uh, a deposit or a transfer that comes from an account that nobody has uh, disclosed. Um, and I think discovery issues sometimes set the precedent of how the case is going to continue. Because if at the beginning, everybody's trying, you know, everything is suspicious. So mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, well, you didn't give us that bank account, then you must, what else are you hiding? When mm -hmm. a lot of times it's like, well, no, I just didn't realize I had $1,000 in a random Bank of America account. You know, I, I wasn't mm -hmm. hiding things. Mm -hmm.